Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zunky, and in this video, I decided to do Fight Cauldron today. I was told that Fight Cauldron was actually pretty good XP, and um, I found out that it was also pretty good money as well. Um, you're not going to be making like five mil an hour here or anything spectacular. Uh, if you're not, you're not really coming here for money. Um, that's not the main purpose of it. However, I must say the XP here is pretty darn good. Um, and just as you can see in the very beginning, I was failing a bit trying to figure this out because I had not done this since the quest. This was my first time. But um, after a few deaths, I finally figured it out. One thing that I did figure out is if you die, you lose half the obsidian shards that you actually gained during the fight cauldron which isn't really a huge deal because you can gain enough obsidian shards for the full set of armor in about half an hour at max stats it does not take very long at all also when you die it resets your overload so I went in there originally with overload and I died on like the second monster that popped up and I'm like screw this but anyway what you what's really really important about the fight cauldron is you always want to be looking at the squares on the ground and the second they start blinking you want to get off them because um, once those uh, squares on the ground, there's a nine or a three by three grid, so basically nine squares that you can stand in. Uh, the monsters will spawn in these squares if there are no other ones, but you do not want to stand in them when there's lava, basically when it starts blinking white and eventually turns red, um, because it will hit you for very rapid 1,500s, um, and it will kill you incredibly fast. So I died quite a few times because I just wasn't quite quick enough to get off the squares, but immediately as those things start blinking, you just want to be spam clicking away. And there are some abilities that will freeze you, uh, as I found out later. I think I died a couple times. Uh, for example, if you use the range ability Rapid Fire, um, the mage ability Asphyxiate, and I think there's a couple melee abilities as well, um, you will basically get owned by the squares because you cannot step off. Um, and also the boss that you um, fight during the quest, he will apparently come and challenge you sometimes. I don't know what the reward is for killing him. But if anyone is interested, just ask in the comments, and I'll look it up for you and reply to you in the comments if you're really interested in what the reward is for killing him. I remember him being quite difficult during the quest, um, and that w turned out to be the truth in the fight cauldron as well. So I wouldn't really mess with him unless you really know what you're doing. Um, but don't worry, you get very, very good XP um, and decent money per hour without having to kill the boss or anything. Another thing that I wanted to note is, in my experience at least, melee was pretty much useless because e the only creatures that are weak to melee are the ranged creatures and you can hit them pretty well. Um, the low level ranged creatures you can hit them just fine with mage even though they're supposedly really strong defensively against mage. The low level creatures you can hit them fine with mage and they die easily. Um, the high level mage creatures you can hit them with range. Um, but it's a little more difficult, but they don't spawn very often. So really the only reason you'd ever need melee is for the high level range creatures, and I think I only saw four of them in an entire hour anyway, so um, you can kill them with range, and I would recommend not bringing melee at all, um, because often the creatures are standing on lava squares and you cannot attack them with melee because you'll be killed by the lava. So that's why I'd recommend to not bring melee, so after a little while I just ended up only bringing range and mage. Part of the reason I came here was I wanted to actually fully degrade my royal crossbow so I could recharge it, and I ended up not doing that because forever, for whatever reason, the royal crossbow is just taking whatever to recharge. It's been on 1% for what seems like forever. Um, I wasn't able to do that, but I found out that using magic is pretty much, uh, for the most part, all you need here, except against a specific few monsters. But magic is really, really overpowered, I would say, because melee is not very useful and range does not hit as accurately as mage on most of the monsters. So I used magic the vast majority of the time, and it turned out just fine. Of course, you can always use Ganodermic, which is going to give you a bit better defense, and I would really recommend doing that. Um, I do have a set of Ganodermic, so I'm not quite sure why I didn't decide to wear it, but I just stuck with the Subjugation and a Varox Helm for some reason. Again, not quite sure why I was doing that, but I suppose you guys can forgive me since this is my first time here, and I'm just making a video for um, educational purposes, and hey, one of the best ways to learn is by doing the wrong thing and then knowing how to not do the wrong thing the next time. So, from my mistakes, hopefully you guys can be a bit more experienced when you come here. Um, also, this is incredibly sped up, but it is, of course, one hour of footage, and it's a bit hard to commentate for one hour, so I just sped it up by 1,000%, so it turned into six minutes instead. 
And uh, drops wise, what you're going to get here is you're going to get a lot of gems and stuff. I would recommend picking up pretty much everything if you have the inventory space. Um, you will get gems, and uh, you, they drop a fair amount of obsidian items as well. I believe I got five or six obsidian items in an hour. Um, they are not worth very much, of course. They're worth pretty much alk price, which is between 15 and 30k ish. Um, I believe I had all the obsidian items except for the cape. Um, I'm not even sure if they drop obsidian capes, but I had all the other ones, all the weapons and the shield. Um, that is not the obsidian armor, of course. That is the the obsidian armor is what you get for the, from the shards that you get during this mini game, and what that does is it reduces your damage by 50% while in the fight caves or the fight kiln. So that's pretty useful if you want to do um, fight kilns for money and you don't have great tank gear, I suppose. Um, but it does degrade over time. I think it lasts around three hours or something like that. So you can do like three fight kilns with the obsidian armor and then you have to repair it. But that's not a huge deal because you can get a full set of armor in half an hour in the fight cauldron. It doesn't take long. And also the XP is so, so good. Um, I believe I got about 440k XP in an hour here. But since I was not using the best gear and I was a noob and I died a lot during the start, I'm just going to round that up to 500k XP because the first 15 minutes I got absolutely terrible XP rates and then the rest of the time I w did pretty well. So we're just going to say it's 500k XP an hour if you're a fairly high combat level, which I think is pretty fair. So here are all the loots that I got during an hour of Fight Cauldron. Um... As you can see, a lot of uncut gems, um, a lot of ores, a few runes, and uh, yeah, five obsidian items. So I got the obsidian dagger, the obsidian sword, the obsidian staff, and the obsidian maul. So I was missing the mace. Um, I believe there is an obsidian mace that you can get as well. And you also get a fair amount of those onyx bowl tips, which are pretty nice because they're worth about 6k, XP, or 6K GP each. So as you can see, it's pretty much worth picking up everything except for maybe the runes. If you're pressed on inventory space, you might want to leave those on the ground. But I got 576k GP in one hour of doing the fight kiln, which is not bad at all in my opinion. Very, very worth it. Um, and also 441k XP, but as I said earlier, you can easily get closer to 500k XP an hour if you go in there and have a vague idea what you're doing and not just uh, go in there Rambo style and get killed immediately five times like I did with having no idea what you're doing. But anyway, um, I did get enough, plenty of um, obsidian bars to make the obsidian armor. I was, I had enough to make two full sets, not counting the helms. I made one of each of the helms and then two sets of armor, and I still had a bar left over. Um, and that's with me being a noob. So as you can see, you can quite easily get a full set of obsidian armor in about half an hour here, which is not bad at all. And it's definitely not an XP waste or anything, because this is by far one of the best training spots in the game. Um, I would not say it's a great training spot for melee, just because it's melee is extremely difficult and annoying to use there, but it's very, very good training for uh, range, magic, and defense. So anyway, I highly recommend this spot if you have done the quest, um, and thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Stay tuned for future videos coming soon. Join my friends chat, and with all that being said, farewell.